Hello and welcome to the Siege Rework uh, video. Um, this is going to be a first look for me. Um, I haven't watched it. I've watched like a bit of it, like up to here. Um, and they didn't show much. So we're just going to watch it together. Settlement should not be an easy undertaking. Um, Total War Warhammer 3 there has we go. reworked how Siege So work. it looks like the walls just the same. As well as defending, every inch taken will This is just dearly. all set, set up. Settlement maps are now larger, and we've okay. introduced more variety of maps than in previous games. Okay, show us the map. With the though. fall of the Turtle Gate, Miao Ying moves her army from the Snake Gate to Wei Jin in an attempt to bolster the city's defenses. This and isn't like. Part out of, of Cathay. Okay, I just want to say real quick, them walking her isn't like there's two separate gates. So far I can tell. It's just lore stuff. It's all just lore stuff right now. Um but bigger maps, okay, I can take it. Um so let's see. Wei Jin, capital of the Celestial Dragon Empire. Really don't care. A walled fortress and a testament to Cathay's architectural brick. Okay, he just said something there. Three walls. So it sounds like we got three sets of walls. So they had to fight through three sets of walls, which kind of is. How's the AI going to do that? Um, how's that? Brilliance. When defending, walls are the first defense against an attacking army, but by no means the last. We now have the option to turn the streets into a bloody maze. Using supplies, we can build towers, barricades, and traps. Okay, so it, it's sounding like um, the events where um, a bunch of YouTubers did and were all... Um, Kiss love against corn and doing a attack siege. That sounds like how a siege is gonna work. So prepare and plan your defense, but never rest easy. The first object for any attacker to overcome is the wall-mounted towers. Unfortunately for our Sinch invaders, towers now have wider capture areas, so defenders don't need to be as close for them to be active. This means we can spread out our uh, units across a larger area. That's and the bad. Arrows, bullets, and artillery on their approach. Oh, that's going to make sieges worse. Cathay isn't enough to keep Sinch from breaching the walls. Attacking sieges is going to be worse. Fall. It's time to fall back to our secondary positions within the city. Our defense now lies with our barricades, traps, and towers. We'll need a new currency introduced in Warhammer 3, supplies. We'll start the defense with a base yeah, it's number of supplies defense and can the gain more that they showed combat before, by holding reversed. locations around the settlement. Instead of supply, us attacking a zone building, and like, building and stuff, victory it's points. These key behind. points have pre-designated build locations for construction. Once so, a barricade or tower is constructed, it can so be dismantled for a refund of supplies and rebuilt elsewhere. But keep in mind, construction and dismantling is a lengthy process. It looks like it was 14 seconds. Are destroyed if their health reaches zero, or if the supply, building, or victory point they're attached to is taken by the attackers. If this occurs, your supplies are not refunded. It's worth noting that whilst attackers can capture points, they cannot build barricades or towers. Rather than a messy brawl in the streets, Warhammer 3 How sieges is the are AI about defenders use controlling the flow of battle Honest. using a settlement's architect. Hold up, hold up, hold up. This is Grand Cathy. This is Cathy's capital. Is this the end battle? No, this is the siege rework. So... I'm gonna save it for a plan and execute layered fallbacks and hard points where they can chip away at an attacker's forces. To this end, settlements have become multi leveled with bridges and upper tiers that cross over streets, giving ranged units more opportunities to shine. A good many of these bridges and overlooks are dockable like the primary walls, giving our soldiers all the buffs and benefits of any other docked unit. 
In sieges, both the attacker and defender's role are tactically more challenging and more rewarding. Settlements in Warhammer 3 have been designed with more open areas and strategic avenues to hide troops in. The avenues are the perfect ambush spot, making flanking and devastating charges a more viable tactical strategy. In overview, Warhammer 3's sieges offer a diverse array of fresh settlements to overcome and protect. They allow defenders to prepare for a new kind of battle occurring after the attackers have taken the primary walls. They add a new currency to manage and spend on fortifying defensive fallback positions with barricades, towers, and traps which are used to further repel invaders. They allow for a multi-layered experience where units can be docked to overlooks and walls within the settlement itself and encourages real-time reorganizing of defenses to adapt to an ever-changing battle. All of these features, coupled with dynamic new settlement designs, make for challenging and satisfying sieges packed with highs, lows, and phenomenal visuals. Wei Jin has fallen, but the forces of Tsinch will struggle to reach the celestial city above. The Dragon Emperor is safe for now. Even so, his daughter has barely managed to escape with her life. To Nangao she travels. Okay, I'm gonna mute this and just play this in the background. Um, so, straight up. How is the AI going to do this? Straight up, how is the AI going to work with this? It sounds like the AI, it's either the AI is going to be too smart on normal difficulty and literally no one's going to be able to capture settlements or walled settlements, or the AI is going to be so incompetent, literally nothing's changed. Except for a few hindrances here and there with the building of those towers inside. It's going to be a lot more costly to do anything other. Oh, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Oh, those, that's cool. That is a thing to note. Uh, the Giselle type gun people can go on walls. Interesting. Anyways. <laughs> that that was just a very interesting fact because actual Giselles can't go on walls. But basically them making those towers range wider is pro it's not a big deal for players, it's a big deal for AI. Because what you normally on the harder difficulties, if you're defending a walled settlement and you want to take your towers. You, you literally want your units to be the thinnest possible so that they don't get hit with artillery, range units, a lot of things. Um, so there's no point for them changing this. For changing that. Absolutely no, nothing helps. This benefits the player more than it does the AI a little bit because those building those towers alone will benefit you. The problem I see is these bonuses and all that. Okay, my problem right now with sieges, especially at higher difficulties, is leadership. Leadership, leadership, leadership. The enemies will have one unit left out of 120, or five units left out of 120, and they're still standing there with no, almost no help. So, what the frick? No. That sh they, they, they will literally will stay until you kill every single unit. It's ridiculous. And then, like, if you kill... All the infantry and there's one hero and one lord left they will literally stay fortified they will be like yeah no i can win this uh my entire force has not been touched but all, your entire force is gone the problem is it's leadership 
think it absurd leadership for sieges where they will die to the last man unless they take army losses. But this just seems really silly in all honesty. Where I don't know. I feel like this this is a change. I don't mind this change. But either the AI is going to be really, really competent and be a bastard, or they're going to be so incompetent that, hey, we just made them so that they build those secondary towers, which will literally murk your entire force by themselves. Like that tower. This tower will probably kill most of those units without you touching them. Because they gotta be strong. Legend of Total War, um, I know some people might be not saying this, but on Legendary Difficulty, if something works on Legendary Difficulty, that means it works all the way down. The best unit on Legendary Difficulty means it's the best unit lower tiers. It doesn't change anything. I mean, the melee units will get placed up if you are talking about, hey, melee, melee units need to be, are viable. Yeah, okay, you're talking about the difficulty scaling there. Then, on normal difficulty, like, some unit, melee units work. But the thing is, is that that range unit is still as good as it was before. <laughs> or the unit that was good in Legendary is still as good as it is in Normal. And sometimes it's even better in Normal because of that melee. That's... <sighs> That's why I see it's like this on Legendary, um, Legend of Total War... When he did Kislev, he found the basic the basic arrow towers that you could build were way, 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 way stronger than any of the other towers because of their fire rates, and they just were DPSing things. Which means even on normal difficulty, those arrow towers will still be good. Now I'm saying here, like looking at this, it's like it looks like it's a bigger map. It looks like it's bigger inside. And I am literally, I don't know, this looks like it's way, way, way heavy to the um, defender side. It's way defender friendly rather than attacker only. Before I would say it was neutral. But now it's way much attacker. Oh, this is new. Unit cards. So there's a yin and a yang mode. Okay, that's cool. Well, I'm noticing things that I'm going to be placing in my other video. Okay, but like, I don't understand that. This is my problem, is that this seems... This seems like it should be... When you're attacking somewhere than anything. I'm thinking of several quote unquote doom stacks that can do sieges appropriately. And this seems like you're gonna be punished. Or oh, then you gotta use a mixed infantry or base unit. Do you have to then mix, ha 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 ha, don't use doom stacks. Um, thing two, just, 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 just to know, just to know, so you guys know. The doom stacks will do better at this than any other stack I'm thinking of right now with units. There's no way that this is beneficial for attackers. Attackers, like, are hurt so badly and I'm seeing players are gonna struggle a lot more with siege battles 
especially newer people because this right now i am looking at it oh it's nice that's some, some range really long range but i'm looking at it now and i'm seeing a lot of spots where ca thinks this is a good idea like oh you're gonna have all these variety of units it's like no no maybe on normal difficulty but at the higher difficulties no this you're literally people are gonna die i'll be okay with this change if they add some other things like hey you climbing the walls no longer make you uh fatigued Because that is a problem. That would be a problem here. Like, if you are fatigued at climbing the walls, it makes having infantry units even worse. But, hey, who knows? I just got a feeling that siege battles are going to be an uphill battle for most people attacking. And defending, they're probably going to be the easiest. They're going to be this. They're going to be a cinch. That's what I was thinking. So, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching. And I will see you guys later. Bye bye.